Can you ever achieve your weight goal and actually stay there if your genetics are fighting against you? A lot of people would say, no, you can't because your genetic set point determines your body weight in the long term. Well, today I'm sharing studies that paint a different picture. And as usual, I can pretty much guarantee you've never heard this information before and won't hear it anywhere else because I have gone and dug up weird hidden studies that no one is talking about, thanks to my PhD training, so that I could share them here with you. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time researcher with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish experiments of my own, and by night I share the results of other people's studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing studies on how much of your weight is determined by genetic factors versus under your control. And this information will apply whether you're trying to lose weight or gain weight. And as part of this, I'm going to give you a pretty wild list of things that are more genetically determined than your weight. And I found all of this stuff to be pretty mind blowing and hilarious at the same time. So I hope that you do too. To answer the question of how genetically determined your weight is, we will be talking about heritability, which is the proportion of variance in a trait that is explained by genetic factors. So how much of your weight in this case is explained by genetic factors. And to look at this, researchers typically look at identical twins. So twins who have the same DNA who are raised either together in the same environment or apart in different places. So if your body weight were hundred percent heritable or hundred percent determined by genetic factors, then identical twins who have the same genes should always be the same body weight, regardless of whether they're raised together in the same environment or raised apart. And what these studies have shown is that your body weight is approximately 50% heritable, but this is actually a major overestimate because we also know that the gut bacteria you get from your mom during birth, actually plays a big role in your weight in the future. So even though this is something that's present at birth and would end up counting towards heritability in these types of twin studies, it's actually not genetically determined. It's something you get from your mom while you're born and you can actually change your gut bacteria. So this 50% estimate of your body weight being determined by your genes is actually an overestimate that includes a lot of variants from gut bacteria. And in terms of actual genes that have been looked at, less than 10% of body weight can be explained by identified genes. So overall, the study suggests that less than half of our body weight is determined by genetic factors. So on the flip side, if less than half of our body weight is determined by genes, that means at least half or more of our body weight is determined by our behavior in our environments. So that means at least half of our body weight is under our control. So the whole idea that you shouldn't try to do anything and shouldn't try to achieve a goal weight because of your genes is pretty ridiculous. Also, there's really no good way to tell if you have good genes or bad genes because even if your parents are overweight and your grandparents are overweight and all your siblings are overweight, it doesn't mean that your family has overweight genes. It could very easily mean that your family just has tended to eat in a way or have an environment that is conducive to being overweight. So for example, if your great, 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 great grandparents started eating really high fat diets, then there's epigenetic factors and within family cultural factors that will have that high fat diet continue to be passed down and you'll grow gut bacteria that are more conducive to making you crave a high fat diet. And so over all these generations, it's really the eating patterns that are being passed down, not necessarily the genes. So looking at your family is really not diagnostic for determining if you have good genes or bad genes. So for example, it could be that you and your whole family have skinny genes or skinny genetics, but it's just helping you not be more overweight. So you could be 400 pounds from eating an obesogenic diet or a diet that promotes obesity but your skinny genetics are protecting you from being 500 pounds. So really there's no way to tell if you have good or bad genes and even genetic testing won't be able to tell you much because again, the identified genes we've found only explain less than 10% of body weight. And on the topic of dietary and environmental factors that determine your body weight, stay tuned for next week's video because I will be sharing studies on how to actually change your body weight set point. So if you're interested in that, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and the notification bell to see when that comes out. But now for our wild and crazy list of things that have been shown by studies to be more genetically determined or more heritable than your body weight. So our first thing that is also 50% heritable is the amount that you text and call people. And our second one is your hobbies and interests are 50% heritable. And for our next category, we have lifetime income, education, and your talents, which range from 50 to 90% heritable. 
So if we were to take the logic that a lot of people apply to our body weight in saying, well, it's genetically determined, there's no point in trying to change it or reach a healthy weight, you should just give up and accept your very unhealthy weight, which I do believe in body positivity and accepting yourself as a person, but it's nice to try to be healthier without hating yourself. But if we were to take that logic and apply it to these things, then we would be saying, well, there's no point in trying to make more money. You should just accept your income level because it is genetically determined. You shouldn't go to college if no one in your family has because your education level is genetically determined. And we know that that is definitely BS. And now for my favorite one, your likelihood of owning a dog is more heritable than your body weight. So it's about 55% genetically determined whether or not you will own a dog. And the amount you play with your pet is 40% genetically determined. And I think the ridiculousness of this one is pretty self-evident. If you were to say, well, you should just accept your current circumstances of whether or not you have a dog because it is ultimately genetically determined. And next, your likelihood of calling in sick to work when you are not sick is about 40%. I just love that someone did a study on that. And for our next one, your choice of subject in college is 50 to 80% heritable, and your career choice is about 50% heritable. The amount of time you choose to practice playing music is 40 to 70% heritable, and your chances of getting a DUI are 60% heritable. And I really hope that no one is going around saying that we are doomed to get a DUI because of our genetics. Your political affiliation is about 50% heritable, and your happiness is about 40% heritable. So if you're really into the whole fatalistic genes determine our life philosophy, then I guess your takeaway from this video might be that you need to get rid of your dog because no one in your family has a dog. You need to quit your higher paying job because the rest of your family makes less. And you need to call in sick to work more and maybe get a DUI, depending on if your family has also done those things. But I think the sensible takeaway here is that the amount that our lives and our body weight are determined by genetics is very overblown. So 50% heritable ultimately doesn't mean that much. Like I really hope that you don't feel like all the things I just told you are determined by your genetics because that would be a very sad way to live. But rather, what you should be taking out of this video is that your body weight is not actually out of your control. You can change your environment, you can change your diet, and those things end up playing a massive role in your body weight set point, as I'm gonna talk more about next week. And in the meantime, if you are looking for science-based ways to lose weight in a way that requires no restriction, no misery, none of that horribleness, then check out my other videos here. I talk a lot about losing weight with intuitive eating and whole or unprocessed or low-fat plant-based foods. So for some fun starter ones, I've got a video showing that just adding bread to your diet makes you lose weight, and also one that just adding oats to your diet makes you lose weight, all according to scientific studies. So check those out if you're interested. Please excuse the background change. The light has just been going crazy in here, so I keep having to find the place with the least light shifts. Um, but for a little life update that's related to this topic, now that the weather is getting colder and I'm tired of feeling cold, especially from having less fat than most of the times in my life, I am actually wanting to put on some weight and gain some muscle and do a bulk. So I'm working on that. So hopefully I'll be putting on some more muscle soon and not be as cold, but also if I start looking a little bigger in these videos, that's why it's not because I'm losing control of my diet or something. I just, I don't like being cold. I really hate it. And if you are interested in asking more in-depth questions about these videos or any other topics related to these videos and want to get involved in fun discussions and hear extra fun science findings from me in between videos, then head on over to my discord community where I post fun facts and bonus content and ask you for your opinions on what to talk about in videos and what topics to do in general. So if you're interested in any of that, that is all available in my brand new Discord community. And while we are waiting on people to join to hit critical mass for getting good discussions going, I'm sharing extra facts available to everyone in the Discord. So for example, this week, I have talked about studies on whether or not you should take Tylenol or reduce your fever when you're sick if you're looking to shorten your illness. And also how you can very easily increase your creativity and problem solving abilities in the moment. So that's what we have talked about already on this week. And then I'll talk about more stuff next week in the Discord. If you're interested in that, head on over to my Patreon. It is $3 a month to join the Discord. And the reason I have that is just to keep out negative people because <laughs> anyone who wants to be really negative at me would have to pay me $3 to go and be able to leave a single comment before being permabanned. So that seems like a pretty bad deal for trolls. So that's my goal. But if you are a longtime supporter and you have 
left comments here in the past that have been positive and we have nice conversations and you're clearly not a creep or a troll, then I will happily manually add you without you needing to pay anything to the Discord if you want to join. So just let me know, preferably via Patreon message if you're interested in joining the Discord and we've already chatted here in the past, or if you've donated to my GoFundMe in the past because I figure trolls will not have nicely donated to the GoFundMe here. So that's another way of making sure we're keeping the Discord positive and keeping out trolls. And I also have bonus notes on each episode as well as bonus clips on a lot of episodes and the ability to ask me big research questions where I give you essentially a video level of information for whatever you're interested in. So if you're interested in any of that, head on over to my Patreon. I think there's more I'm forgetting there, but you can go find it. The link is up here as well as below. And I hope that this video was able to convince you that your body weight and your health are in your control. You are not genetically doomed. You can change your lifestyle and your diet and change your body weight set point. And again, as a reminder, I'll be specifically talking about how to lower your body weight set point or raise it, I guess, if you're interested in next week's video. So stay tuned for that. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell to stay up to date on that. And if you like this video, please, please share and like it so more people can get this information so we can help people know that they are not helpless, they are in control, and they can change their weight and their health. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you back here next week for how to change your body weight set point.